What is it you want to be remembered for? Think about that question. You don't have to come up with an answer right now, because most of the time, it's not about the answer. Most of the time, it's just about the asking and the action. Bennett College, um, a women's college in North Carolina. Bennett College was founded in 1873, and it's the first HBCU all-women's institution. A regionally accredited college, brilliant institution, was on the verge of closing. I am facing the loss of accreditation membership in our credit association known as SATS. Right now, we are facing a challenge of raising $5 million by February 1st. And we will regret the day that we lose the 101 HBCUs, of which Simmons is one of them. It's only two HBCU schools that are all women's colleges, and it would be really sad to see that go. Perhaps one of the reasons that Dr. Simmons will live on throughout history was because of his empowerment of Black women. There's a saying that says, if you educate a young man, you have educated a young man. If you educate a young lady, you have educated a nation. This is what Ida B. Williams says about Dr. William J. Simmons. He wanted me as a correspondent of his paper and offered me the lavish sum of $1 a letter weekly. Bennett College offered a scholarship, an academic scholarship for me to be able to attend. And that was the beginning of my dreams. It was the first time anyone had offered to pay me for the work I had enjoyed doing. And I remember one of my professors there, Dr. Nanette Smith, and from the first day that I met her, she called me Dr. Fryer. I had never dreamed of receiving any pain, for I had been too happy over the thought that the papers were giving me space. I never had a goal of becoming a doctor. In every way he could, Dr. Simmons encouraged me to be a newspaper woman. So Dr. Smith, in calling me Dr. Fryer every day, created this self-fulfilling prophecy. And whatever fame I achieved in that line, I owe in large measure to his influence. That's how I challenge to uh, continue the 146-year-old history of Bennett College. But if it were not for one of our own local foundations, namely Papa John's, they would have closed. The fact of the matter is, every black college in America, every black college is in jeopardy if we don't get behind these HBCUs. Good morning. My name is Shawnee McMichael. I am a proud graduating senior. So which legacy do you want to leave behind? Will you be remembered as someone who chased their passion, who pursued their goals, who gave themselves to making the world we live in a better place? As someone who said, it's not about me. It's about the legacy I will leave behind. A recent article in The Atlantic by Lawrence Glickman History professor at Cornell University noted that during the 60s the consideration by the white majority of what full equality would bring about caused a reaction which was coined white backlash and defined as the hostile reaction of white Americans to the advances of the civil rights movement. Today racism is maintained not primarily by what white people and white institutions and philanthropy and government does against black people. But it's what philanthropy does for white people that they will not do for black people. Um, what is tragic is the what happened between Simmons and U of L. The president of University of Louisville, Raymond Kent, wanted Simmons College's campus so that he could establish a, a segregated 
division. When you have an individual, an organization, an institution that is seeking some white help based on some type of humane focus, but we're not seeking white control and will not allow white control. Once that is refused, then there's pushback. So not only did they use their superior financial resources to purchase the campus that slaves had built, but he spoke very disparagingly of Simmons University. He said that um, uh, Simmons was a poor excuse for a university. And Raymond Kent got that wrong. There's some things that are at loggerheads here. If HBCUs are producing graduates who are challenging the system, who are challenging not just the status quo, but the very idea of white supremacy and black inferiority, then don't think that you don't find those very ideas infesting white corporate America. You know, greatness is not exercising power over people, but greatness is the empowering of people and helping them to be their best. And let me say this, um, if it were not for David Jones Sr. And, and his wife Betty, he has set something up that will help future generations. So I will never forget it. Charlie Johnson and I went to see David Jones Sr. David, I'm the president of Simmons College. And let me just be honest with you, I know nothing about being a college president or college administration, absolutely nothing. And I said, this school in the poorest area of our city and the building is in total disrepair and we have no money, no accreditation. But I looked him in the eyes and I said, but you know what, David? We have something that we can build on that can be transformative in the city of Louisville. We have history. I think we can bring this school back, have a great, historical black college university and without blinking an eye he said to charlie johnson and i he said kevin i'm going to invest one million dollars and i'm going to trust you to do the right thing with it now he gave us this one million dollars with no strings attached and it was unrestricted funds which means that he trusted us enough to make the right decisions and he did not micromanage us that is unheard of, especially when it comes to persons with wealth investing in black institutions. And one of the great days of my life was when I could call David Jones Sr. and say to David, we fulfilled the mission. The most important lesson that we can learn. The Jesse Lewis Jackson Sr. Center for Racial Justice. And I can't say this strong enough. I cannot say this emphatic enough. Will spearhead a national movement towards a just, more equitable society. I say this without equivocation. Towards reckoning, rebounding, and responding. Or without fear of contradiction. To such a time as this. That the most important thing we can do in black America. By elevating systems that are pivotal to the black experience. Is to reconstitute black led institutions. By elevating black families, black churches, black schools, black led institutions, black businesses, black media, and black empowerment and civil rights organizations. Are absolutely critical to the health and well being of the black community moving the black community from disparity to equity. You fix this through black institutional empowerment. You can fix almost anything. The Jesse Lewis Jackson Sr. Center for Racial Justice. 